Institute. Hey everyone, um, this is Lamar, uh, the founder of MedRank Interactive, the host of the Healthcare Digital Marketing Podcast. I have Stephen Fogg with Fogg Media on here today and pretty excited about this episode. Steve and I, we've known each other for what, about a year maybe? I'd say, I'd say that's probably, probably when, we, when we made our connection. Okay, about a year and it was crazy as I heard about you with the Mako Laboratory Group and then um, I saw you in some of the independent physician flyers. And I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> but we never connected until I think it was, uh, was it was it Ben? Or somebody connected us together. And then we, maybe it was, was it Shannon? Yeah, 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 yeah. Shannon, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Right, Sh Shannon, Shannon connected us together. And um, so you have a wealth of uh, experience in the healthcare industry. And uh, I think you, you spent a lot of your time, you know, with the branding side of things, uh, advertising, marketing. Um, what I really love about what you'll speak about today is uh, the strategic communication side of things um, as it relates to storytelling and how to really help clients engage with their audience um, or their patients through uh, their branding and storytelling. So without further ado, uh, I would love for you to just introduce yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And and Lamar, I appreciate the opportunity first and foremost. And yeah, I mean, it's, you know, what it's all, everything is all built on, you know, on my history and the trajectory to get to this point. Um, you know, again, for the people who don't know who I am, Stephen Fogg, I am the principal and CMO of uh, Fogg Media. We're a healthcare, we're a marketing firm dedicated strictly to healthcare. But why did I get into this? This this Well, it all starts back on May 20th, 2009, when I had diagnosed testicular cancer. Um, spent the next 13 months in and out of a, in a Presbyterian hospital, which is now Novant, um, wow. with, with my testicular removal surgery. Um, then I was at level one trauma at atrium for a lymph node dissection, which went really, it was really difficult. Um, and then I spent, I did three and a half rounds of chemotherapy treatment at an independent oncology center here in Charlotte. It was wow. three and a half rounds because my body just kept rejecting it. Um, There's one drug in particular that I was not really allergic to, and it landed me into, into a center that I, I kind of, I, I jokingly refer to it now as the Potemobile. It was basically, okay. I was like a breathing apparatus for Probably a, probably a day. Um, when it oh, just wow. looked like the old Pope mobile, and I had a, a little a little um, knob I had to, had to suck on and suck steroids down to for, wow. my, for my breathing. It was a it was it was a crazy time. But I but I always share that story um, when I talk about the business side of things because you know I've learned that um, you know from that point forward I wanted to give back to this industry that helped save my life. You know I'm very yeah. blessed to have a family. Two beautiful girls have been married for six years now, uh, together for much longer than that. Uh, <laughs> and and you know I've honestly been searching from that day forward to how do I how do I give back to this, this industry? And you know I was working in media for a very long time. I worked in the radio business, I worked in TV, and then I managed digital properties um, for um, a local TV affiliate in town too. And and it just wasn't it wasn't clicking with me. And and you know. There was a point in it when you know you mentioned Ben. He he referred me to a to a business coach to kind of help me determine my you know my why. And it was like, why don't I connect my expertise in media marketing and find something that you know that I'm really passionate about? And that's where the healthcare aspect came to mind. So I decided to combine media marketing and focusing on the healthcare industry. And that's where you know, this business was born. Um, and and yeah, and we focus on strategic communications. Um, Telling Absolutely. stories, using data to do that, and and making sure that in the process you're 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 reaching the right audience in the right places, and you know all those all those buzzwords of being very equitable in the process, managing expectations, you know, right? ROI, blah 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 blah. Um, but yeah, when it's all said and done, like it's all about the story and telling your story because we all have a story to tell. And that's what differentiates us from 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 A to B. Right, and that's pretty cool because uh, you have a mission at this point. Um, based on your experiences and how you now uh, use your skill sets and your expertise to impact a lot of these medical practices you work with. And not to steal your, your show, but I, I wholeheartedly believe in that because when it, like when I think about basketball, so I play basketball in my life, right? So um, when I fell in love with SEO and digital marketing because I created a youth basketball website to teach uh, young players how to become better how to learn the game, how to develop a, a better basketball IQ. And by seeing the growth on that website with the marketing strategies, like it just drove a different level um, of passion towards that industry and the mission changed. So I love what you just said about, you know, what you experienced in 
uh, and then how you thought about, well, well, how can I take this experience and really impact uh, that, that industry? So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, like, I guess like when it comes to like radio, TV, marketing, what like outside of, you know, your experiences with um, your own personal experiences, how, like how do you fall in love with, you know, marketing and strategic communication? Well, I think you, you, you touched on it a little bit with, you know, seeing the end result play out. Um, and what's really interesting now, you know, we're in the COVID, COVID times, and yeah. I, again, I'm really tuned into the data. I follow the data, um, and seeing that, you know, year months past when we might have done a piece of content that was uh, uh, tailored towards preventative, um, preventative, uh, you know, care, um, right. or or healthy eating habits or dietary things, and I'm seeing on the data that those things are starting to be picked up now. Um, and seeing that, yep. and, and understanding that that's being picked up now because people are not not predominantly scared to go to a hospital or uh, or you know a, a small practice, but they want to try to try to do self help first. So right. it's kind of like it's 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 you know and and then seeing that okay this work that we've done has actually helped grow the practice. Um, seeing the conversions, you know, I mean you're you're definitely are you know you're you're on the on the on the pay per click and SEO side of things. You know that's your baby. Um, and we yeah. use those, we use those babies to help amplify our messaging. Right. Um, but then seeing the end result and seeing, oh, wow. Okay. This, what, what we wanted this to do, um, it, it worked, it went, went in the correct route and at the same time also helped, um, tell their story a little bit more. So when you right. might go in to see Dr. XYZ patient, ABC is like, Hey, I saw that, you know, to your point with basketball that, you know, I liked your content piece about basketball and knee injuries or whatnot it basically is connecting the dots and seeing yeah. it all all come together yes yeah, that's, that's so key and i think it's so imperative during this time especially with covid right where I'm, I'm sure you're experiencing this with a lot of your your clients is the messaging of how they're being uh you know they have precautionary measures in place ppe uh, related equipment to really help uh, their their staff communicate that effectively but then also their patients to feel comfortable coming in when they have oral or health issues, because they still need to be seen, even though there's a virus. So I'm sure, sure. you'd be able to speak more to this uh, through this interview of strategic communication uh, during COVID to really, you know, kind of still maintain and grow the business during this time frame. Um, but we'll, we'll pivot before we get into that. So sure. I would love to talk about storytelling because I yeah. think that's a lost art. I think even when it comes to digital, you know, everyone, yeah, yeah, we're in the business of SEO and and on Facebook ads and Google ads, but it's, it's not about how good you can create a, a, like a campaign. It's how can you relate to those pain points and get the message across. So when it comes to storytelling, in, in your opinion, how, how do you help your, you know, your, your clients stand out? Well, I think it, 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 I think it's all reframing the thought process around marketing when it comes to storytelling, because especially in healthcare, it's a different sell. You know, it's not like you're on a you're you're trying to sell a car or a widget or something like that, where there's not an emotional attachment to something. You are in many instances you're dealing with a life and death instance. I mean, with me and cancer, you know, that, that's kind of how I par parlayed it. Okay. One thing that that I've kind of that I, that I, I I've been trying to preach, uh, and and maybe not as effectively as I as I could. The point is to identify the provider as the rock star, as the star athlete, as LeBron James or the David Lee Roth or the yeah. Jay-Z of healthcare. Why? Because you are, you are more well-trained than 99.9% .9 of everybody out in the world. You right. are an expert. You are a rock star when it comes towards this. And what you do, you're not an expert in selling a car or selling a widget. You're an expert in saving life or yeah. making a difference in life or making it a different and more possible way. And so selling that story is a very integral you know a lot of doctors hide behind the names of their practice or a big system on that and that's perfectly fine but you know really kind of separating yourself from the pack by telling your story um helps with what you're talking about with your seo parts then um another part about it is it also humanizes you which yeah. i think is very very under utilized in the healthcare space right now i mean you look at everything from pharmaceutical ads where I basically feel like I've got robots talking to me, telling me to buy pill X, Y, Z. Um, <laughs> yeah. Cause it is, I mean, it's like, it's like the, the commercials, they're so ridiculous, but there's no, like who is actually like, who's actually decided that this is the right way to sell me uh, this. It just doesn't right. make sense. It's such as you, somebody like, this is going back to my personal, the personal journey um, through cancers. Like, so there's one drug in particular called Nulasta, 
and I apologize, I'm pivoting a second here, but I think this kind of helps transcend. Um, there's a drug called New Last out there that I had to take during chemotherapy treatments. Now, what is it? Well, chemotherapy knocks your body down. It kills everything good, everything bad. You feel like shit and you're done. Yeah. Um, but, but you need something to pick you back up. Or if you don't, your immune system's not going to rebound. You're going to get sick, and then you might catch pneumonia and kaput. That's, that's what it is. So New Last is that drug that rebounds you rapidly. I think it's full of T cells and those other things. And while you see commercials of people with these new Lasto shots and they put them on the back of their arms and yep. they are happy. They're playing tennis, they're swimming, they're doing all these fun activities outside. Well, I can tell you very, very much Lamar from personal experience and from knowing other people that have, that have taken this drug that while it is beneficial and very important to the whole, whole process around chemotherapy treatments, it's also a it's also probably one of the most painful parts of the process. Yeah. Um, bones ache. You can't taste anything. Well, excuse me. You can taste things. This is the time when you hear in cancer patients talk about having like their, their gums taste like pennies. Now I understand yeah. you don't want to present that a commercial. Um, you know, that, that, those are <laughs> detrimental, but like, it, it's almost like you're selling a, a, a bad, you're selling a, a, you know, a wrong bag of goods per se with this because yeah. No one taking the last is going out and going swimming or playing golf or tennis. And if they are, God bless them. But I don't know a single one of them. Um, and so I think circling that back around with storytelling is like, you know, presenting yourself, your authentic self in, in the point. You know, that new last the commercial is not presenting himself in, in, a, in an authentic front. Um, making sure you're doing it. And to your point, you know, finding things that if you don't have a story like mine where I'm a cancer survivor and I've turned the why me moment into my why with building yeah. Fog Media, there are still things that separate you from the pack. You might be a a runner, an avid runner, or mountain biking, or you might help, you know, a children's charity or whatnot. All right. these are pieces of the puzzle to help humanize you in in, in the, the lives of the patients. Because one thing that 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 the systems haven't figured out yet, but the smaller groups are starting are really starting to understand is the patients are getting smarter. They know there's more choice out there. And yep. It's all coming back to cost. Yep. Um, and granted, I, I I'm I'm probably running off the rails a little bit with it. No, it's good. But, but, but yeah, <laughs> but so it's 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 it's, it's people are recognizing there is a choice out there, and differentiating yourself in the pack um, is the best way to you know put yourself out there. Yeah, I really like because uh, because with us, we both you know our, our targeted clients are healthcare independent healthcare practices um, around the local area. So when they're competing against these bigger brands that are you know they may have you know a hundred you know two hundred locations it's a different, like, that's a different customer relationship. So these independent physicians or doctors or, or medical practices, they need to make sure their doctor connects with their, their patients at a different level. And it's, it's like what you're saying, personal branding, because those type of patients are different, right? Like they care about, they truly care about customer service. They, they care about who the doctor is, how nice he is and all those good things. They're not just going through a drive through where it's going to be, you know, quick experience and I'm on to the next thing. It's, it's, it's gonna, you're spending time, you're building that relationship um, with, that, with that doctor. So I think it's, it's so imperative, like you said, to really you know, connect with that personal brand because um, that's, what, that's what the patient wants to come, come and experience. So definitely agree with that for sure. When it comes to how to do that and the tools to, you know, to use to effectively um, story to tell, what, what's your thoughts on that? Well, I think it's, it's a... It's a it's a three-tiered approach, truthfully. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking up and thinking because it has changed a little bit during COVID. Um, I mean, yeah. this, has, this has definitely affected the way to do, this, to do this effectively, basically. But, you know, really, first and foremost is understanding, well, first, you know, telling your story or, or understanding what it is, finding out what it is and, 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 and grabbing hold of that. Yeah. And second is how to get out to the people in the right place at the right time. And that all goes back to understanding your data. And, you know, where we live, we live in the digital space predominantly. So, and what's very great is, is most of the time you can pinpoint data down to a granular level. So we can understand not only um, who, I, who, what, where, when, and why is that demographic information, you know, uh, targeting down to a zip code, whatnot, but right. it's also going to the qualitative information, building that persona of who that, who that person really is, really define them beyond like demographic information. So you right. might all, you might know that, you know, this is, you know, that person that you're trying to tell a story to is a woman, 2554, living in 28211 zip code, making $65,000 plus a year, uh, married, blah, 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 all that stuff. 
But yeah. now with like qualitative data sets, you can also understand patterns, what they're doing. So with knowing that quantitative data set, you might also be able to understand that, hey, they like, their, 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 their browsing habits are showing that they are, that they are in tune with you know, healthy eating and quick, quick meals and gardening along these things. And yeah. all that stuff's great. And now that, that information might not pertain to your typical story, but if you feed them with this type of information as well too, it, it, it all comes together, it comes ahead as being resourceful. Right. You know, we preach all our content that goes out being educational, impactful, and resourceful. Educational, that is what you, you might be talking about as an expert provider. You know, it's going back to that cancer doctor, the oncologist reference, you know, being, talking about the new, updated, latest and greatest things going on in oncology. Um, impactful, um, you know, let me go to resourceful. Resourceful okay. is, is identifying that, um, you know, okay, we see our, our population likes healthy eating and, and home and garden. Let's, let's put some tips on there and some healthy recipes to kind of feed that appetite they're doing. And then yeah. uh, impactful is all this stuff wrapped around in, in, in a big bow. It's basically be, in making an impact with it, um, doing it around telling your story. Yeah. Um, all this stuff together helps. I mean, when you're talking your SEO piece of the puzzle, I mean, this, these, things, these things start working together cohesively and kind of right. just help, help molding the image and, and, and help with your brain. Um, so again, it's like understanding your data, um, focusing on the content and then you know, the distribution areas. Um, and, and where we're at, you know, distribution, we, I want the, 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 the distribution and it to be as um, owned as possible. Right. So, you know, converting everything back to the website um, or things that you own. I mean, we don't typically own your Facebook or social media accounts, but you, tip, you would own those more than say, buying an ad in uh, a local magazine or newspaper. Um, right. So, you know, making sure everybody gets back to the thing that you own the most because it's the most equitable and you get the most return your investment on that. Right. What, what I guess, out of like talking about how to do it, like what tools would you recommend to really get into understanding, uh, you know, your, your audience and, um, you know, how providers can really be better at, you know, storytelling and resonating with that audience? Sure. Well, other than a great marketer like yourself or me, uh, <laughs> right. I, I would say, yeah, listen. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, to 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 understand. I mean, I rely heavily. I mean, the tools that that, that we rely on predominantly are free, um, okay. and it depends on how deep a dive you want to get in. First and foremost, I recommend anybody. Well, every practice that everybody's listening that should have a website. Um, yeah. Second, more they should have access to their data, their Google Analytics. Right. Um, and if they don't want to take the time to learn it, find somebody who will. And I, I tell you, I mean. The very, very uh, high level, uh, no, sorry, very low level stuff, the, the pedigree information is very easy to find out. Yeah. Um, and, that, and that is a great place to start is your Google Analytics account. Secondly, is going on all your other accounts, your social media. And you kind of just start, you start you, uh, pinpointing all this data together, seeing does my message, does my, does my audience that's reaching me on my social media accounts reflect the same that's reaching me on my website? Or that might be reaching me on, God, I don't know what else, a uh, podcast like this. Um, right. Like all those, all that data together. Now you can go even deeper with this and you can find like census data. It could really truly, I mean, go to the U.S. census. Um, yeah. You know, Ben Ben showed me a great one with like uh, Claritas, which kind of, kind of does some more like uh, persona, uh, persona um, tracking, I guess you'd say. Uh, but really just kind of like these, uh, like putting all these free tools together to kind of shape that narrative. Um, but I think when it's all said and done, if you're not presenting a message that's authentic, yeah, it doesn't matter how much this data you have. It's just it's it's not going to resonate long term. You might get a, might get a quick fix, but long term it's not going to resonate. Yeah. So so from what I'm hearing, it's it's really uh, making sure that you're connecting with your audience by storytelling, but through real stories, like real real um, impactful stories that may be relevant to let's say the the doctor himself or would you even say it could be to, you know, a patient story that sure. they can resonate with the, you know, with their audience or who they're trying to target from a marketing standpoint? Yeah. And I, I mean, you could even take it a step further and look at your, your storytelling as a way of giving back even further. So for instance, what we've done with Fog Media is we've done a lot of like client spotlights. We push them out there, but during, yeah. during COVID we're, we're starting to push out promoting, specializing, focusing on, Nonprofits are helping the healthcare industry. So we just pushed one out. Um, we just did a, class, a spotlight on Charlotte Gives PPE. It's a nonprofit organization that is 
that is basically there, it's a bunch of doctors from large hospital systems. Well, there's a lot, a lot of doctors who are finding ways to collect PPE for anybody in need. It mostly predominantly doctors and people, you know, um, um, but it could be um, teachers or whatnot too. So, yeah. you know, that, um, that for, that is a great way to, uh, to also, um, sorry, I'm losing my, tra my train of uh, thought a little bit here. Okay. Um, uh, where is I with this? So, so, so I guess using the storytelling to not only shape your narrative, but also give back. Like I, I, I don't, I, I, I believe, especially in, in the healthcare uh, world that there is, there, there, there is a, a semblance of, of giving back. Um, yeah. more so than you would in, like, say, if you're working in the automotive industry or whatnot. Um, I think it's just, just part of the whole, part of what, what, our, what our clients are doing. You know, they're, they're saving lives and, and giving back. And so it's, it, it, it might be talking a little bit more about our brand than, than, than theirs, but they can do it in the same way, giving back either patient testimonials or, yeah. you know, the educational content of, of say, the new last drugs kind of something less painful, you know, talking about that and the pros and the cons of, of, of that. Right, and, and that's that's a really good point. So, like, we we have a client that gives back a lot. They're very involved in the community, so uh, they spend a lot of their time with the Samaritan's Purse. And what they do is they run Facebook ads to kind of promote that of you know donating to this this cause. And it doesn't necessarily mean they're getting patient from it or customers. It really means that they're showing that they care about the community, but then they're also developing their brain at the same time. Because when people see that they do care about the community, they're involved and they're, they're giving back, then they're like, who is, who is this practice? Like, 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 what, like I wanna, I wanna know, learn more about what they're doing. And then when that, that need arises of, you know, needing uh, dental care, uh, for example, uh, they're gonna remember that, you know, that, that practice. So yeah, you, I think you're exactly right. It's really, how can you, and then, so I had a podcast the other, other week and uh, a guy by the name of Dino Gomez, he's a Facebook ads uh, expert. And he talked about, it could be, you know, let's say you're, you're in a community and there's a, a football program that is making it to, you know, the championship game or whatever. And uh, they need support. Um, they need more fans there. It's, it's, not, it's not necessarily they're giving back like a monetary value, but they're getting more visibility to this football program in that community because they want the support for that, you know, that, that football team. And if, let's say, I'm a customer and I see that on Facebook, I'm like, oh, that's awesome. I'm going to go support, support this team for their final game. But then I'm like, who is this dental practice? <laughs> why, are they why are they talking about you know, this football program? So it, it, makes, it makes you stand out because you're different. Um, you're thinking about the community. Um, you may be giving back. Um, but then also you're, you're helping, you're helping, a, there's some kind of cause that you're helping. So, so I agree with that 100%. I guess when it comes down to like storytelling, so you, you threw a, a lot of good insights out there when it comes to effectively, you know, telling your story to your audience, like, like how, how do you really, what's that process look like in your agency? Like, how do you take client from understanding their story and then effectively communicating that to their audience? Well, I think, um, you know, touching base on, on, um, sorry, I got, I got just some stuck in my head from, from the last, <laughs> from the last piece. And, and I, I love where your head's at with that. And I apologize if I can, if I can jump back. Yeah, on hey, we can bounce all over the place. I, I think the, I think the one thing that we both, uh, are trying to get at, but didn't was, um, I mean, what was, was the fact that you can do this now, like, yeah. It, up until you know 10 15 years ago you needed to rely on like a very top heavy media branded organization and, and and pay a lot of money to do what you just described um you know helping out samaritan's purse in a very impactful way or you know with us doing a clt gives ppe piece understand that because of everything being so granular now that your clients can do this on their own save a lot of money and make a bigger impact in the process being yeah. a lot more equitable, um, you know, and, and not having like your brand association tied to a larger, you know, corporate entity that might also be supporting this and only getting a piece of your, your puzzle, you know, to that being in, being in that world for 10, 15 years, which I did do, I do know, you know, how that goes on. Yeah. Um, and just a very little bit of that, that donation you do ends up going over to that place, but knowing that you can do it and make the impact yourself 
and really take full ownership of it, be equitable, you know, and not, not, not needing uh, other things. I think that's a huge important piece of the puzzle that we, you know, that, that, that we're, we're, I think we're both trying to convey with that. Um, right. But as you're talking about like how, how like effectively getting your story across, well, you know, there's, you know, we talked about, you know, finding your story, you know, distributing or, or understanding it's going to hit the right message with your data, but it's also understanding the channels for it to go through. Um, and there's the own, earned, and paid ways to do it. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, just for the sake of this conversation, you know, you, we're talking about like owning media, as we kind of mentioned already, that is, this is what you physically own. You're, you're, for instance, on the digital world, your domain, your www.greatestdoctor.com domain and, and having it live there or your social media accounts or anything that you really have physical control over. Right. Um, that is your own. And that's like the thing that when we try to make sure to get our message across, we want to make sure that that is short of first and for what we said, for brevity, you know, talking about what we said earlier, um, it, it's going to make the most impact and most equitable and it could last for years. You know, right. if, if you still have that, that most relevant piece of content and that most relevant you know, that zip code or that area, um, it's always going to stand out until right. somebody else does something else. And I love that because you can have a nice small, you can have a really, really strong doctor in the shadows of a large practice. And yeah. in the in the world of Google and Bing, they're going to stand out better as long as they keep doing this. You know, right. investing in their own media, their own their own marketing aspects. Um, then you're talking about then all that bleeds into your earn, which is that your SEO, your reviews, your you know, if you are that sh shining star in the in the in the in the shadows of a large practice, you're probably going to get some media media pickup too if you've done it right. Where you're, where you're sending your information out to the media channels, which that's kind of circumventing all that stuff we just talked about with like the paid sponsorships and whatnot. Um, and then mentions from your biggest advocates, which hopefully, hopefully yeah. are, are your, yeah. your patients, you yeah. know, and, and their, and their family, and whatnot, just thanking you for a job well done, great bedside manner. You know, you really did the, the right thing. The last but not least is paid. And uh, and, and, and uh, I, I, I always tell, you know, small, like small healthcare practices, if you're going to, if you're going to jump into paid media, start in pay-per-click. Um, yeah. Why? Because you can own you can own a piece of the pie. You can you can capture that those three or four things you do really well. You can make sure that from your own media, your SEO, and then your paid, uh, all that together. Make sure that when people are searching for that, and say, let's go back to that new Lasta, for instance. You know, uh, unpainful new Lasta shot. Search the keyword. Yeah. If that's one thing that you want to be known for. You can own that by by doing all this stuff and then uh, investing some pay per click. There's also other things along the line to display ads, which are becoming a little more convoluted. I mean, there's ad, there's pop-up blockers out there that are kind of uh, doing it. But I will say there is still a lot of value in that, especially if you're branding a new practice or whatnot. You know, it's kind of taking the shape of, of, uh, of a direct mailer campaign um, on digital. Um, but again, it, it's, it's a numbers game at that point. And then last but not least, if you really have the funds um, and you really have the, 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 the want, um, you know, look at traditional media. Um, print magazines, billboards, um, you know, radio and television. You know, we, we serve a hospital system. Um, and it was interesting when, when we first took over the account and did our huge analysis, I mean, they were on, they were heavy in traditional media. Okay. Um, and they had, they, had, they, they were, they, they were heavy in traditional media and print, all of it, all of it. And I was, I was immediately going, I, before I even started jumping and doing their strategic communications plan, I was like, man, they're spending way too much money on billboards, just way too yeah. much money on billboard. And then I started diving into it. And I'm like realizing, okay, wait a minute, for, for a, a group that is, you know, it's two hospitals, 40 independent, independent Rebecca's is all within this, like, this, this radius around here. And yeah. it's, it's supplied by two major highways that everybody pretty much has to take to get from point A to point B. I'm like, okay, this, this, that, now I see it. I understand like the need for something right. like this to reach such a large audience using traditional media. Now we went heavy on pay-per-click, you know, to kind yeah. of get those, those small terms for each individual practice. But when it came to truly branding, you know, methods such as, you know, as using billboard to really brand the hospital system and then using smaller publications within the communities to brand, brand you know, maybe, the orthopedics uh, center one day and, and right. uh, neurospine the next and so on and so on and get the message on, on a more level and then really hit them in granulated pay-per-click level. So, um, so, I mean, that's, that's a kind of like how the, the over, overlying arch of how to do it. You want to make sure owned is, is locked. You want to make sure that when somebody goes to your website, 
especially because I think it's like up to 86% of all healthcare searches start online. Yeah. If you think about that and you've got a really shitty website right now, excuse my language. Um, <laughs> like you should really strongly look at considering looking at one of us two smart gentlemen here to help yep. with your website build, because that's very important knowing that 86% of people start there for their, exactly. for, for their search. So, you know, tying up your own then focusing on your earned media, which is your SEO. And then lastly, if you really want to invest or, or believe that you're ready for that next push, you know, start looking at paid, uh, paid uh, marketing media efforts to effectively get your message across. Yeah, I love everything that you said because that's that's what we breathe as well. And and by the way, everyone, we're not competitors. <laughs> we, we, I mean, we we can help uh, these clients in two different aspects. But to your point about um, branding and SEO and paid advertisement, so it's so key what you just said because with branding, even if you're on a billboard, if you're on radio, like you're you're getting your your message across to a, probably a wider reach. But guess what they're going to do once they see you on a billboard or, you know, see or hear you on the radio, they're going to go to Google and they're going to search your name to see what other, other people are saying about you because they can't hear that on the radio. They can't see that on the billboard. So they're going to go to Google to see what your review portfolio looks like. And then what I love what you said about paid advertisement is. So when we handle, let's say, a, a doctor who is a startup, right, they like they don't have any presence online and they need to get patients. So we, we highly recommend paid advertisement, such as Google ads, because like you said, you could dominate Google. I mean, if you have the budget for it, dominate it tomorrow, like for a specific keyword tomorrow. SEO takes a little longer, right? Because it's a, it's a building process. You have to build your, your resources, your credibility to Google for them to trust to put you at the top. So, with, but with paid advertisement, you're paying Google to show up at the top so you can do that <laughs> like the same day. Sure, yeah. Um, and then last thing I would say is, with Google ads and, and SEO is that Google is funny. Like <laughs> the algorithm is so funny because <laughs> so we had this dentist in Indian land, right? And he wanted to be known for emergency dental care in Indian land and Valentine. Okay. And he's not in Valentine though. He's, he's across the board in Indian land, but um, cause with Google's algorithm proximity is everything. Yes. So if a user's in Valentine and they're searching for an emergency dentist Valentine, they want to be clo as close as possible to that match for that search. But because he was using Google ads and focused on keywords such as emergency dentist in the land and also another campaign for emergency dentist Valentine, he was getting <laughs> patients from both because he was showing up at the top of those, uh, you know, the, the Google ad fold. And he necessarily wasn't ranking naturally in Google for dentist Valentine, but his ads were. And it was amazing to see that because Google rewarded him because he was running those ads. And um, I would also say to your point about qualitative measures in terms of really understanding or resonating with the audience. So we added live chat to a, a dental practices website and you wouldn't believe all the questions that are coming up in those, uh, those chat modules or those chat widgets. And we're taking that information and we're using that because we're seeing a consistent pattern with, you know, with some of the questions being asked. So then that could, you know, be a blog post or that could be, you know, a Facebook ad post or ad copy or campaign. There's different ways you can use those questions to resonate with the story and then answer those questions within your story. Then I think that is going to have a huge impact on how to convert. Cause, cause like, and I know you can speak to this too, is with, when it comes to marketing, you can send as many leads to a practice, but if they can't convert them, it yeah. makes it very challenging for them to get new patients. Yeah. <laughs> and I think helping them on the front end of storytelling, but also resonating with the story, but then also answering the questions, connecting with the pain points can definitely help uh, convert some of those leads into patients for sure. Yeah. Um, but I, I love what you do with storytelling. And it, it, I think it's, a, again, a lost art um, because it's really, it's a lot of, uh, you know, generic content. <laughs> you know, just copying what the next, you know, dental practice or medical practice is doing down the street. Um, so I love that. But hey, I appreciate, I appreciate all the amazing insights that you brought uh, to this, to, to this episode. Uh, where can people find you, um, Stephen? Like how, how can they, someone wants to call you for strategic communication, marketing, how can they get in touch with you? Yeah, I mean, uh, gosh, all the traditional ways. I'd say the best way to start the, the process is to go to uh, fogmedia.com. That's F-O-G-G -G, okay. media.com. Um, or you can email me at uh, Stephen, S-T-E-P-H-E-N, at fogmedia.com, and we can start the conversation there. 
Um, and yeah, Lamar, I, I appreciate the time too. And, and as you said, like, I definitely don't see us as competitors at all. I think we're very complimentary of one another. And, you know, is there no conversations we've had at this point, up to this point, I definitely identified that, that, you right. know, our strengths complement one another when it comes to things. And, you know, who knows, you know, that, that, that might lead to us pairing together to kind of dominate the world with some bigger client. Who knows? Oh, yeah. But, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We definitely like pre appreciate it. I like the way you think. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so, so again, I'm Lamar with MedRank Interactive, the host of uh, the Healthcare Digital Marketing uh, Podcast. This is Stephen Fogg with Fogg Media. Uh, we'll include all his information in the description of this episode. Uh, thanks again for you guys listening.